Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. This is Wednesday, December 18th, and it's 9.16 a.m. And I found this in my email last night. You know, I'm running a little behind, but that's all right. I'm trying, you know, I'm doing the best I can. So this is, it's not exactly old news because this is just the, the story that brings us to what's happening today. All right. Uh, this is from Fox News. We need to keep up with this impeachment process going on. Because this could be how President Trump goes down. And then there's like, okay, if we've, we've impeached him, now what do we do? Does the Vice President just take over? Apparently, supposed to be, right? When Nixon, I believe it was Nixon, resigned because they were threatening to impeach him, and rather than go through that, he resigned over the Watergate scandal. If I'm, my memory is remembering right, all this happened before I got sick. So, see, past things are better than what happened yesterday. Okay, um, and that was when Woodward and someone else, reporters, discovered he had messed around with the votes somehow. It had to do with the election. I believe, anyway, then George um, Ford, what was his first name, Gerald Ford, took over as the only non-elected president in the United States. Okay, so I guess that's what would happen, right? Not necessarily. Not if there was a rapture and total and utter chaos. And he just happened to disappear. And maybe even the ones right under him, which you know where they would go if they were still alive, underground, if the huge earthquake that some people are saying is going to happen first, which I don't believe that. I know that the earthquake is going to happen before the second rapture. All right, that's in... Revelation chapter 6, when the seals are opened, at the sixth seal, there's a huge earthquake. And that's when they go running into their dumbs. Well, the Bible calls it caves, and into the earth, and underground, or however it's worded. And they cry out, rocks fall on us. Okay, then what happens? Chapter 7 goes into the angels holding back the four the wind, the four corners, at the four corners of the earth. And then the tribes of Israel for the one group of 144,000, which I don't understand all this. Uh, oh, my computer just darkened a little. That reminds me. Oh, I don't want to forget uh, what I was saying, that's when Revelation 7, 9 shows the multitude too large to number shows up. That's when the majority of the church will go. I'm sure of it. They are not ready. They are not all going. And someone put up a message yesterday. I watched it saying there's going to be a great earthquake before the rapture. That's true before the second rapture. The bride will be spared the wrath of God. And that huge earthquake is going to kill millions. And that person in their prophecy, I forget who it was, said millions will die. That happens after the first rapture. has to be. Otherwise, the Bible wouldn't be true. Because it says, just as in the days of Noah, there will be eating and drinking marrying, giving in marriage, and basically life as usual, plus all the sinning going on. Not people running for their lives, not people starving, not people uh, running here and there and in you know, all chaos. No, the sinners are going to be going on about their merry little partying ways. And the rest of us will be eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage as usual. 
when the day that floods came and took all the sinners away to death, then Noah was rescued in the ark. That was a type of tribulation, don't you think? But Enoch, spared of it all, he was raptured. So remember that. Okay. So I don't know how I got off onto that, but it doesn't matter. There must have been a reason for it. Okay. What I'm talking about today, or right now, is this Fox News alert that I got yesterday. Okay. And in fact, it says 22 hours old. So it must have come out. Um, well, sometime yesterday, whatever that is, 11 o'clock, anyway. Uh, last update was 12 hours ago. Okay, that was, that might have been this one because it's talking about it being in late, late at night. Okay. Yeah, this was at 11.51 a.m. There's a video on here you can watch. It's titled, House Rules Committee, the Rules Committee, the ones that determine what the rules mean, okay, adopts rules for, <laughs> in other words, they made up some new rules for historic impeachment vote after contentious marathon session and they'll be at it again today before the the, the vote all right it says by a nine to four party line vote late tuesday night the democrat house okay so today is just wednesday So this must be the update. By a 9-4 to party vote late Tuesday night, the Democrat House, Democrat-led House Rules Committee approved the procedures for how the full House will consider the two articles of impeachment against President Trump on Wednesday following a marathon session that, at times, provided a glimpse of the fireworks to come. Tomorrow, which is today, promises to be a long day, Rules Committee Chairman Jim McGovern, Democrat of Massachusetts, told reporters. Republicans previewed their likely lines of attack throughout the day Tuesday. The only thing that is a clear and present danger right now in this room is the pattern of attack and abuse of rules and decisions to get at this president that started over three years ago the night he was elected. Republican Representative Doug Collins of Georgia charged. The panel's meeting laid the procedural groundwork for the House debate on Wednesday, outlining the timetable and other factors for the historic and divisive moment in Washington. Yet despite the often dry material up for discussion on the Rules Committee, the panel's meeting Tuesday featured feisty testimony from Republican and Democratic lawmakers who stuck to their tried and tested narratives. Neither side is giving, in other words. As final impeachment vote nears, swing districts, Democrats fall in line. Trump unloads on Pelosi in a last-minute letter. Now, that's a big title. New section. At the core, or that's just thrown in there, as final impeachment vote nears, swing district Dems 
fall in line. Trump unloads on Pelosi in last minute letter. I guess you could click on that because there's a line under it in blue. At the core of the inquiry is Trump's July 25th phone call with Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky. Democrats allege that Trump's push for investigations into the 2016 election and former Vice President Joe Biden's conduct in the country was part of an attempted quid pro quo that's I give you something if you give me something. See, I'll do something for you if you'll do something for me. That's quid pro quo. In exchange for White House meeting and the unlocking of military aid. Let me read that again. Democrats allege that Trump's push for investigations into the 2016 election and former Vice President Joe Biden's conduct in the country was part of an attempted quid pro quo in exchange for a White House meeting and the unlocking of military aid. Trump denies this. But in the session itself, the battle lines were drawn with Democrats presenting the impeachment as an obvious and clear-cut case of obstruction and corruption. They're just out to get this president no matter what. Supposedly. See, they're all playing their parts. I'm sorry, but that that's what's going on. But still, this, this is, must be how he's going to go down as opposed to an assassination. But we don't know. The president withheld, this is a quote, the president withheld congressionally approved military aid to a country under siege to extract a personal political favor. He did not do this as a matter of U.S. policy. He did this for his own benefit. That is wrong, and that is n that, and if that is not impeachable conduct, then I don't know what is. Chairman Jim McGovern, Democrat of Massachusetts, said Tuesday. Another quote: "The president's aggressive and unprecedented resistance to congressional subpoenas for witnesses and documents is blatantly and dangerous unconstitutional. That's what it says. Subpoenas for witnesses and documents is blatantly and dangerous unconstitutional. They might have meant dangerously unconstitutional, and that was Representative Jamie Raskin, Democrat of Maryland, said. If accepted, another quote, and normalized, now it will undermine, perhaps for all time, the congressional impeachment power itself, unquote. Trump has denied the quid pro quo allegations and claimed that Democrats are engaging in a, quote, witch hunt, unquote, against him. Republicans in the House have made similar accusations, accusing Democrats of running a kangaroo court as they dominate proceedings and push the House toward impeachment. Town Hall Madness. Dems, <clears throat> this is like another subtitle. Town Hall Madness, colon. Dems, the Democrats, in swing districts feel voters' wrath for backing impeachment. That's something that looks like you can click on. It might not be a subtitle as much as it is 
click here for more information on this. All right, quote, this is not the result of a fair process and certainly not a bipartisan one. Sadly, the Democrats' impeachment inquiry has been flawed and partisan from day one. So I guess it should come as no surprise that the Democrats preordained and out preordained outcome is also flawed and partisan, unquote. Representative Tom Cole, Re Republican from Oklahoma, said at Tuesday's session, quote, the entire circus has been politically motivated from the very beginning, unquote, he said later in the hearing. Representative Collins kept going back to the claim that Democrats decided on impeachment, then have spent months trying to find a crime to fit the narrative. Okay, I decided to stop it at that because right there tells you what's going on. They haven't liked this president since day one, and I listened to a good bit of this little video you can click on. And this man says it. You've been wanting to impeach him since before he took the oath. Since since that night he was uh, voted on, uh, voted in or whatever. Anyway, however he put it, they've been wanting to impeach him since he was president. Since he first became president. They've just been witch hunting for something that they could grab onto. Okay, imagine, I just wonder how our country would be right now if Hillary Clinton had won. I guess it doesn't really matter. God is in control. No matter what happens, God is in control. He does put into power who he wants into power. And how things go are going to be his control too. So, this has been a Fox News report. Put up yesterday at 10.33 a.m., but it's done by Adam Shaw, Chad Pro... Adam Shaw and Chad Pergram, P-E-R-G-R-A-M, <coughs> and Greg Ree, R-E, is how his last name is spelled, from Fox News. Okay, I'm going to end it here, and, uh... I'll try to do a report tonight or as soon as something comes out on what's going on all day today. And we'll see what happens. This might be how they get Trump out. Then again, maybe it's a big distraction. We'll see. All right. I'll talk to you later. Bye for now.